It's probably no secret to Chronicle viewers that your humble reporter enjoys breakfast at a classic New England diner, and I find it almost impossible to pass by an authentic country store. But there is another regional icon that is high on my appreciation list, the classic New England barn. These humble yet dignified structures come in an infinite variety, some filled with animals, of course, others left to waste away, though traces of their past can sometimes surface unexpectedly. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Then there are those barns enjoying a second life and new popularity for celebration. You may now kiss the bride. Feasting, even the occasional blowout sale. Sounds like a good excuse for a road trip to me. You know, poke around and see what sorts of stories are hidden behind those old barn doors. So buckle up, we're headed off on a barn voyage. This is Chronicle on WCVB Channel 5. First rule of road trips, you're going nowhere without fuel. That's why our first stop on this barn voyage is finding breakfast. Open for breakfast and lunch, Parker's Maple Barn has been pouring it on for more than 50 years here in Mason, New Hampshire, just north of Pepperell and the Mass State Line. We're out in the middle of nowhere. 35 years ago, Ron Roberts and his wife sat down to eat in the barn for the first time, and they were sold. They bought the Maple Barn shortly after. We felt like, this is like home. I feel like home. It's like quintessential New England. Along with the restaurant, there is the corn crib gift shop, and of course, the sugar house, where Ron Roberts Jr. oversees the wood-fired evaporator. Spring is high season here in the sugaring world. The clear running sap boiled down to amber gold. So Ron, obviously maple is the star here, but the barn figures pretty prominently in what you do here, right? Talk to how central the barn is. That's what brings people here. They love barns, people love barns. Next up on our barn voyage, some ramshackle sheds and a puzzling box marked MLK that turned up in the Connecticut Historic Preservation Office. And I thought, why would we have a box labeled MLK? So I opened it up. Staff archeologist Kathy Labadia was stunned to learn that a young Martin Luther King spent two summers working on a tobacco farm in Simsbury, Connecticut, when he was a student at Morehouse College. And I thought, first of all, embarrassment. I'm a historian, I live in Connecticut, I grew up in Connecticut, I don't know this story. This is an amazing story and I didn't know it. Labadia learned the Culbro farm was slated for development and immediately started the process to make the farm a registered historic site. Next up, learning everything she could about King's time in Simsbury. Little did Labadia know at the time, but much of the research had already been done for her by a group of local teenagers. It had always been a myth that MLK was in town and a legend. Tara Willerup of the Simsbury Free Library tells us that in 2010, Rich Curtis, a social studies teacher at Simsbury High School, challenged his students to find out what they could about Martin Luther King and their own town. The end result, Summers of Freedom, a student-made documentary. Martin Luther King Jr. spent the summers of 1944 and 1947 working on a tobacco farm in Simsbury, Connecticut. It was an experience that would change his life. Pouring through archival letters and recordings, the students learned that the summers spent in Simsbury had a profound effect on the young king, his first exposure to life outside the segregated South. Yesterday, we went to Hartford. We had a really nice time there. I never thought that a person of my race could eat anywhere, but we ate at one of the finest restaurants in Hartford. In fact, on his application to seminary school, King cites his time in Simsbury as a turning point in his life. The decision came about in the summer of 1944 when I felt an inescapable urge to serve society. In short, I felt a sense of responsibility which I could not escape. The student documentary has made quite a splash with attention from NBC News and the New York Times. And though the film is now more than 10 years old, the project is far from over. 
New students sign on every year to continue its work. Current senior, Alex Vargas. I myself just recently recruited my little sister, who is a freshman, um, but it's definitely like a generational um, tradition almost that is passed down mostly among friends. I personally didn't want the message to die out. That is so fascinating. Mm -hmm. And later in the show, we'll hear about efforts to preserve the old tobacco farm in Simsbury. Right, and you may have noticed in that last shot there, there's a beautiful memorial mm -hmm. in front of the Simsbury Library. We'll have more on that a bit later as well, including the high school students behind that and much more.